Hey, how you doing? Uh, I hadn't done one of these in a while. Uh, I've been doing some cover videos and I've been doing some solos and things like that. So I decided to actually do a training video again or a training discussion. Uh, this one is going to be about some techniques that I actually show my students during their individual lessons, uh, weekly lessons to actually help build their hands. I've created two exercises that each one of them, whether they're beginning students or older students or whatever, have been with me for a while, they all do the same exercises uh, to try to help them get more dexterity within their hands as well as speed. The first is what I call climbing the ladder. And believe me, if you mention this to any of my students, they all look and they roll their eyes and they go, oh, yeah, I know that one. Climbing the ladder is really just a series of paradiddles. But rather than just the single paradiddle, we make it kind of into a game. The actual exercise consists of a single paradiddle left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, done two times. So it ends up being left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. After that, we do one double paradiddle. After that, we do one triple paradiddle. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right. That's as high on the ladder as we go. But if you climb up the ladder, that also means you have to climb down the ladder. And the series goes two single paradiddles, one double paradiddle, one triple paradiddle, one double paradiddle, two single paradiddles, and then a tap at the end to actually show that the exercise has concluded. And what this does is treat us, actually helps us learn how to do dexterity between doing singles and doubles in any length. And by that, I mean, you know, all of our drumming, pretty much is based around singles and doubles. I mean, we can do triples and, and quadruples and things like that, but when you're talking about most of the exercises that you're doing, you're doing them in a single and double fashion. Of some manner. You know, either it's continuous or it's just single patterns that you're doing all the way around. But this exercise, actually, I have to tell you, when you do it kind of slow, and some of my newer students have to do it really slow, is kind of boring. Single. Single. Double. Triple. Double. Single, single, tap. That's the whole exercise. And when you do it kind of slow, yeah, it is monotonous. But it is actually teaching to get, teaching the students how to get the rebound off the drum and feel the difference between just a single and a double. Because a double you're going to feel the rebound on the second beat while the single, naturally, you're going to feel on the first beat. But the really cool thing happens is when you get it a little, even a little bit faster. It 
it turns into a cadence. And in fact, a couple of the high schools around here have evidently adopted this. I have students in a lot of different high schools, and they've evidently passed this on, and they make this cadence happen even for their drum line. And they do it over and over and over again. And when you really burn it up, it really is a good exercise in manipulating the sticks for singles and doubles. That's the first exercise that I have them do. The second exercise that I've been working with all of my students on is the ability to do a balanced single stroke roll and double stroke roll. This came out of my own learning problems, I think, because I had always had, I would say, a pretty good double stroke roll. Open roll. I have a closed roll. But this isn't about doing closed roll. This is all about doing open. But I never could quite master doing the single stroke roll that fast. And I said, you know, if, it, if we're going to be able to do these things, we might as well try to make them at least balanced. Maybe you can't burn it up doing singles, um, but at least they should be balanced with your doubles. So I came up with this exercise. It's actually a two bar exercise. The first beat, it's all in 4-4. The first beat is composed of of 32nd notes and the second third and fourth beat are composed of 16th notes so whatever your speed the 16th notes are going to be here one e and the two e and the three e and the four e and the one e and the two e and the three e and the four e and the beat one is double that fast and the first time through is single strokes The reason I break it up that way is I try to keep it more in a burst mode rather than a continuous because after a while, even if even after a short while, a lot of my students get taxed with being tired trying to do those 30-second notes that fast. So I only give them one beat's worth. Now, I do that for one measure. The second measure is the same actual count and the same structure, but instead of doing the 30-second notes as singles, I do them as doubles. And they alternate one measure with singles one measure with doubles and they are given the instructions to try to make the 16th sound exactly the same and try to make the 32nd notes sound exactly the same whether they're doing singles or doubles so it's the younger students who can't do the 16th notes very fast we do that one e and a two. They seem to be able to get the bounce out of the doubles. The doubles are the, usually the hardest for the younger students. And if we have to take it slower, we take it slower. And I like doing them now. I have to tell you, I like doing them now on the electronics because they are not forgiving at all. When you play a little bit harder, you get a completely different sound that is very dry, and they sound like accents. And the key here is to make all of the 16th and all of their 30 seconds sound even.
Not only do they have to be spaced evenly, but the minute I do this, as opposed to, you hear that accent come out? We don't want that accent in there. So we're trying to do this for balance. And when you really get it going, it really does build my singles and their singles up quicker. And so on and so on and so on. So that's my tip for some hand technique things. Let's recap this. The first one that we talked about was climbing the ladder, which consists of two single paradiddles, a double paradiddle, a triple paradiddle, a double paradiddle, two single paradiddles, and a tap. Taken faster. And the second exercise, which I don't really have a name for, but is the roll exercise to balance out the singles and doubles with 32nd notes for beat one, 16th notes for beats two, three, and four, alternating beat one, with doubles and singles. Those are my lessons for now. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you soon. Contact me anytime that you'd like on the website. Get me directly to my email, and if I have any questions for me, please feel free to ask.